Hi and welcome back this is the clay golem and this is our foundry vtt series where we are looking at our dragons of Stormwreck isle uh adventure that we've created in foundry version 11 and um, we created everything without using any add-ons and we've slowly been looking at some add-ons that help make our experience more full so that's either things that make the experience better for the players more enjoyable effects and things like that or things that make the managing of the game slightly easier and that's the category we're looking at today and we're going to look at two different add-ons so before we actually look at those uh, let's talk about the problem that we want to try and solve if we look at characters like uh, like Haley here who happens to be a cleric uh, she's got a whole bunch of different spells that she can cast things like Bane, Bless, uh, Command uh, all sorts of different things that she can throw out. When we look at Nundro, Nundro also has some spells like Hex, Create Bonfire, and things like that. And we've got Soriman, although he's a barbarian, also has access to some spells like True Strike, etc. So when we are managing a game, the higher level our characters are, the more likely we are going to have lots of condition effects in play. Um, not just things like, you know, whether they're unconscious or not. We might have frightened statuses, they might be blessed, they might be um, all sorts of different things we can have in place. Now, normally in pen and paper game, the DM's got to try and track all of those. What effect is on what character and for how long and get that timing right of how many rounds. Um, when I do pen and paper face to face, I tend to use dice. Um, so if I know that an effect is going to last six rounds, I would put the dice on six. And at the beginning of each round, I would turn all of those conditioners down by one number on those dice. And then obviously when they get to zero, I remember that that effect has now ended. Um, but that's not easy. And guarantee at some point I will knock all those dice over and can't remember what everything was on. Um, so in Foundry, we have exactly that same problem of trying to track all of those things. So if we uh, if we start a combat, let's say uh, if we uh, we ought to look, talk about how we start combat actually in Foundry. Let's uh, just clear our chat to make sure that's uh, nice and clean. If we want to start combat, what we're going to do is each of the participants we can right click and we're going to click on this icon to toggle their combat state. Now what that does in my top right corner under combat encounters, it has added sorry man into this list in the encounter so i can do that with each of these right click then click on left click on that shield to add all of those and you can see i've got all four of my player characters in here now a quick and easy way to do that is i can drag a box like this over and select a whole bunch of tokens right click and then do that and it will add all of those at the same time to my combat tracker so much much quicker than adding everybody individually and of course in this instance we've got a lot of creatures all sturges that need to be in here so we could do that i mean i could have just selected everybody like that and done that as well including the player characters that would have worked just fine so now we've got them all in here here's another little tip if you weren't aware of this any of these options at the top here so rollable tables items actors etc if you right click on its icon it pops out so i can now have a separate combat tracker that isn't connected with these if i need to access other stuff so for me personally i'm going to have the chat open so i can see dice rolls uh, comments and anything like that and have my combat tracker popped out separately so we can begin combat anytime just by pressing the combat button when i'm not going to do that right yet because i want to look at our our first add-on um, before we start that combat so let's say Haley here normally if i go in and cast a spell and i cast bless so this is without any add-ons uh, i kick click cast you can see that in the chat over here it has put Haley long breeze and it has put the description of the spell uh, how the action to cast the fact in it can affect three creatures up to 30 feet for one minute now let's say that Haley is trying to bless her companions here conveniently there's three of them how do we know that those characters are blessed it's going to last for one minute um, we need to do something here we have an effects thing on here 
Um, can we type in bless and find it? No, because it's only searching existing effects. So we're going to have to go and create effects to add them on. That's really kind of a slow way to do it. Um, we just need to remember, we're back to the pen and paper. Oh yeah, sorry man's bless. He's got this many rounds left and tracking it that way. Uh, yeah, you can rely on your players to track that as well. But then that is starting to detract from the actual story and the game itself and becomes about tracking mechanics. And it'd be nice if we can get away from that. So let's look at our first add-on for this video. So I'm going to go to game settings, going to go to manage modules, and we're going to look at this one in the middle, Dfred's convenient effects. I'm going to tick the button, save, and it's going to reload our screen as always. So what this able, I'm zoom in again. So what this enables us to do is to apply effects like bless. Over on the left hand side, all the way over where we've got our icons for walls, etc., we now have a new icon. Uh, if we hover over this hand with a couple of sparkles, like a magic hand, uh, it pops up and says it's D Fred's convenient effects. And if we click on that, we get a menu. I'm going to make that a bit bigger. Okay. Uh, and in here, we can have things saved as favorite, we can have customs ones. We've got all of the conditions you might want. So concentrating, whether they're charmed, invisible, paralysis, etc. But we've also got all of the spells here. Uh, there's some others as well. So equipment ones. Um, we could So we can use that to apply a lantern effect to a particular character. We looked at the torch um, add-on. And I've still got that installed. So I wouldn't need to use this bit because I'm going to use torch instead. But I could use that. Uh, we've got class features in here for when you, when Sorry Man is raging, I can just give him his rage and stuff. So it's going to make it much easier to apply those. So before I apply those, let's go back to that combat. Right click to pop that out again. It, remember it reloaded the, uh, the UI. Uh, and let's start our combat. So we can click begin combat here. Oh no, before we do that, we've got a roll initiative, haven't we? So uh, you'll notice down here there is all these dice. So any one of these, I can click on that dice and it will roll initiative for me very badly in this particular instance. For each of the characters, they can open their character sheet. On the left here, they've got their initiative. And again, they can roll that. And it's going to roll it and it's put um, Baldrick's uh, initiative in there. That's going to be really slow to do that for all of our uh, all of our Sturges when we've got such a large number of individual creatures. Just at the top here, we have two options. Roll all will roll for every person in this combat. Player characters, non-player characters, monsters, etc. The one next to it is to roll all of the non-player characters. So that includes monsters. So that way we can allow the players to roll for their own character which is a bit more interesting for them to actually have that kind of um, participation. Uh, but we can roll all the monsters automatically. And there go all the dice because it's rolling for all of them. Uh, and it's just absolutely spammed our chat with all of those. But you can see everybody now has an initiative order down here. Now you may have noticed that we didn't roll for Haley, but it has rolled for her. The reason it's done that is while Haley is a player character she's not assigned to a player the so foundry is treating her as an npc because she's not attached to a player uh, the same with nundro the same with sorryman okay so it's actually it's treating all of them as an npc and has rolled for all of them that's why it's done that which is fine i was expecting that that's not a problem let me clear this chat again just to keep that clean for this purpose Okay, so when we're ready to start that combat, we literally click begin combat here. As it turns out, Sorryman's going to go first. So he can now do his move or whatever he's going to do. But of course, we're interested in conditions, not just in running combat here. So, <coughs> excuse me. So if I roll this, I might say, actually, yeah, he's got his rage feature. I can click on his rage feature and it comes up and says, oh, is it going to consume his available usage? Because you can only use it three times per long rest. Yes, I want to do that. So I'm going to make him rage. So it pops this up in um, in the uh, the chat over here uh, to tell me he's now raging. Raging, not ranging, raging. Um, but if I look on his effects tab, it doesn't tell me here that he's raging. 
So there's nothing attached to his character to tell me that he's raging. We just have to remember it. Except, of course, we've got convenient effects. Okay, so if we go to class features, with this token selected, I can just click that rage word. And if you saw, it popped up and said plus rage over Sorryman. And it's put a little icon in the top left corner that tells me he's raging. It's also dropped into the chat for me as the game master that rage has been applied to Sorryman. So if Sorryman says, yes, I'm going to rage, the player can do their bit in their character sheet um, to consume that resource that they need to, that one of their three rages per day. And as the DM, I can just chuck that straight onto Sorryman. Bam, he's now raging. Everybody can see that he's raging. We're not going to forget about it. Okay, let's move to Nundro. Um, so I've just clicked this arrow here where it says next turn, the small arrow. And that has automatically moved on to Nundro's turn. Now Nundro might move over here. He's going to make his attack, etc. He's not going to do anything too exciting. Okay, move on. Uh, we're not going to run the whole combat because it's going to take ages. But we skip through and now it's Haley's turn. So Haley is going to cast a spell. Um, she's currently got no effects on her. And she's going to cast Bless. So it's going to ask me, the same as with the Rage, do you want to consume the resource? First level spell. We've got two first level spell slots and I can't cast it any higher than that because I'm not high enough level. But do I want it to consume a spot? Yes, I do. Cast a spell. So it's now dumped in the chat to say, yes, this is the spell that has been cast. Um, gives me the few details, reminds me what it does. But now I've got to remember exactly what Bless does and how long it lasts and who is affected because it can affect three creatures. So I need Haley to tell me who she's actually blessing so that I can track that. So Haley's going to be generous and not bless herself, but bless the rest of her party. So how do I make sure that Sorryman is blessed? Well, you guessed it already, haven't you? You're way ahead of me. Select his token, click bless. You can see it says plus bless and it's added a new icon on. And I can do it for those three. Bam. They've now all got bless. It's updated chat just to tell me that it's been done and tells me how that affects it. So they've now got Bless on. So if we look at Sorryman, we look at his character sheet and go to his effects. It says we've got Bless that lasts 60 seconds active at the moment. And we've got Rage that lasts 60 seconds as well. So he's now got two effects on him. Next thing we need to do, let's skip through. So let's say Haley's had her go. The Sturges do nothing. It's now Baldrick's turn. Let's move him up here. He's going to do an attack. So what we need to do is we can hover over our intended target, let's say this little Sturge here, and press T to target it. So it becomes obvious which one the player is intending to attack. Thank you very much. Not cheating to see what dice roll they get and then tell us. So they can do that and select it. And he's going to make attack with his halberd. Okay, so we click on his weapon. I'll put it in his favourites to make my life easier. And it pops up in to here into the chat and he's got two buttons attack and damage now obviously he wants to make an attack it's not at advantage so he's going to do a normal roll but it's just rolled two different dice it rolled a d20 and it rolled a d4 so if we look at the bottom right hand corner at this chat what this is telling us he rolled a d20 plus three plus two plus an extra d4 that d4 comes from the fact he's got bless so where we had this bless spell cast and it says it adds 1d4 to all saving throws and attack rolls so it's automatically because we've applied that condition it automatically is calculating that in the dice rolls and of course he rolled a 19 and he rolled a 2 on the d4 um, and then he's got his five extra bonus so that's a definite hit and because we had a target selected, it also will tell me what the target was, what that AC was, 14, and it's made this green to say that attack will hit that AC, assuming no other conditions are involved. Brilliant. We know we've hit it. We can now click damage. You can roll his normal damage. And it's going to tell us four. What it won't do is update the token he's attacking to imply that damage okay so we still need to go in and in this case four damage that sturge is well and truly dead 
it's now got zero hit points and I need to set its condition. So I can either right click, go to conditions and select dead, or I can use it from, whoop, I can use it from over here and just drag, oh, sorry, I just click dead, boom, dead. And it puts that little icon in the top right corner so everybody knows that one is dead. So though adding those conditions to the character sheet, not only does it mean that I haven't got to remember that they've got bless, for example, but it automatically will take those dice rolls into account. That's really, really good. We don't need to kind of have the conversation about, well, what does it do again? Oh no, but the last round I forgot to add my extra D4. Can I add it now? It's going to do that automatically for us, which is brilliant. The characters, the players, sorry, can focus on what their characters are doing. They can focus on enjoying the combat, um, whether they hit or not, and describing their moves and attacks and stuff, rather than worrying about membering all of those mechanics. But there is a problem with it, is the fact that Bless will last 10 rounds. So let's uh, zoom through these rounds. I can go directly to the next round. And I'm just clicking that loads of times. And we are now up to round 16. It says at the top of the combat tracker. Soryman apparently is still raging and is still blessed, as is Nundro uh, and uh, our other dude. Well, I'm going to remember his name one day, Baldrick. Uh, they still got bless on. That is not what we really want, is it? So <clears throat> this is where our next add-on is going to come into. Uh, into into use for us. So I'm going to remove these uh, remove these effects because I have to come in manually here to remove these. Yep, get rid of those. So you're no longer raging. You're no longer blessed. Uh, get rid of your bless. So delete that effect. Yes, please. Uh, delete this effect off of you as well. So the cleanup at the end of combat is a little bit of a pest to do that. Right, let's put you back over here. Let's resurrect this Sturge as well, the poor little creature. Okay, so he's back onto two hit points. He's still got his condition marker um, to say that he's dead. Uh, if I click that again, it's going to take that off. That's a good point, actually. If I've got... Because I'm just saying, going through and deleting those takes a bit of time. So if I do this with a spell instead, so we're working it out together. Told you I'm not an expert. If I apply bless, if I click that again, yeah, it does, it takes it off. So it isn't, isn't that too bad. It isn't too bad to take those off. But again, I've manually got to go in and do that. Okay, so let's look at, uh, I'm going to end that combat. Okay, so it's ended that encounter. I'm going to close that window. Let's look at our next add-on. So I'm going to go back to manage modules. And some of you might be ahead of me here and going, oh, I know what's coming next. Um, we're going to add times up. Okay, so I'm going to click on Times Up. I've already downloaded that as an add-on. Now I've activated it. Times Up is running. So what the heck does that do? Well, if you can't work it out, it's going to track how long our conditions and effects have been in place. Uh, and it's going to count down. So we're going to stick with using that Bless spell because it's quite straightforward. Let's add all of these dudes back into combat. Okay, so... Again, I'm going to right click to pop out my combat tracker. I'm going to clear my chat just to keep that tidy and separate it out. And I'm just going to roll initiative for everybody. There go all the dice, hundreds of them. It's not hundreds, is it? There we go. So we've got all of our dice rolls and we've got everybody to go. Sturges have done pretty well on this one. So begin combat. Let's skip through. It's Nundro's turn. Um, let's skip through to Haley. Haley's go. Haley is going to cast Bless again, okay? Just because it's a it's a nice one for us to work with. Yes, I'm going to cast that. Thank you very much. It tells me in the chat that she's cast it. Oh, quick! I need to need to apply these. Who are you applying it to? You're applying it to him, him, and Nundro as well. So they've now got that on. Now, if we look at any of these that have now got Bless, and we go to there, we've still got Bless. Sixty seconds. Excellent. That's in place. That's what we need. Okay, so um, uh, Baldrick's your go. He moves in. He targets this little dude here. He's going to do his roll. Uh, it's asking him to attack. He's going to attack. It's a normal attack for him. There goes that D4 again. So that extra D4 has been added on. It's going to hit that Sturge. I can now click my normal damage and apply that damage to that Sturge, which obviously we know would most definitely kill it. 
So conditions, dead. Okay, because a halberd to a sturge is, is a serious thing. Oh dear, look, I've got the wrong eye. No, I'm sorry, I've just killed my, my player. Um, make sure I've got the right icon selected. Okay, so we know that that works. We saw that a moment ago, um, and it still works the same. Okay, so let's move through the rest of this combat then, and move on to our next round. It's now round two. Let's have a look at that bless. Whoops. So when we look at these effects, this no longer says 60 seconds. It now says 54 seconds. In other words, one round has gone and it's reduced the amount of time that this is still going to be active. So these three have all got bless. And as the combat rounds go, let's move on a few extra rounds and have a look again. It's reduced, it's now 24 seconds. And if we go a couple more, one more, all of their blesses just disappeared. So I can apply using defreds, uh, convenient uh, effects. I can apply those effects really, really easy. Those spell effects, things like bless, bane, whatever it might be. Apply them to an individual token as I need to. It will automatically incorporate the changes to dice rolls because of those effects, which is fantastic. And using times up as well times up tracks how long that's been active and then we'll deactivate it so it gives us this complete cycle of cast a spell apply the effect the effect stays in place until the timer runs out uh, and times up then removes that effect and therefore the bonuses from those dice rolls so personally do you need to use this no does it make the DM's job of admin a lot, lot easier? I think so. I think it's a it's a bit of a no-brainer, to be honest. Why would you not want to do that? I just need to bring this poor little thing. No, I've done it again. Killed the wrong character. Must remember to actually select the right icon. <laughs> but again, I accidentally killed him, but it was a click, click of the button and he's back alive. Um, small heart attack for the player. So that is D Fred's convenient effects combined with times up uh, gives us much more dynamic combat we can focus on what we're doing and it will do those calculations for us um, i think it's great uh, you might have other solutions to this you might not like it if you do let us know i've got a sneaky feeling that some of you might mention a particular other add-on that we could use instead um, but we might get to that so hold your horses but by all means drop it in the comments let us know what you're using if you're using any of these at the moment uh, thank you very much for watching and we'll see you in the next one where we'll look at another add-on bye